Billy, I am a Nigerian prince and I want to hide a bajillion dollars in your locker. Wow, a bajillion dollars? All I need is your lunch money. <laughs> what a great deal. Here you go. Wait, Billy. Just because you want to believe something doesn't mean you should. Come to Camp Quest Northwest, where you'll learn critical thinking and science in a fun-filled, week-long nature camp. No! Camp Quest Northwest can be found at campquestnorthwest.org. Donations and volunteers accepted. The devil is not real. <laughs> tell you what, the day though they uh, made those commercials, now by far the most popular commercials uh, on Ask an Atheist is legendary and how it went down and sort of the writing that went into it. Uh, I'm kind of sad I wasn't there. I think I'll have to endeavor to go again. But yeah, really, we've gotten several emails saying, God, where are those commercials? Where can I get those commercials? I'm kind of hoping they go viral and somebody does a YouTube video, sort of accompaniment. There's to those a lot commercials. of traction. Yeah, yeah I think I, I must say that's probably Probably my favorite ad campaign of all time. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I love those ads. They are they are hilarious. And we'll I put I them up against Mastercard's priceless. Uh, <laughs> uh, e- easily, <laughs> easily, easily. And I, it made me realize that that one, that the level one two uh, from Super Mario Brothers, <laughs> might have the most easily recognizable audio pattern <laughs> in history. You know, all you have to do is that, and everybody knows. You know, do you speak any languages at all between a group of people? No. But if you go, <laughs> everybody knows what you're talking about. This is Ask an Atheist, 253-584-1480. My name is Sam, and with me today again is Nick. How you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. Uh, how about everyone else here? <laughs> are, are, we all, are we all alive? Are we all breathing? Mostly. Good. <laughs> And uh, new to the show, Chuck, how are you today? Doing great, thank you. Awesome. Okay, yeah, so we've got some uh, business to take care of. First things first, uh, Seattle Atheists would like you to know that they will be blanketing Seattle buses with atheist ads in December in a new campaign called One in Four. It will highlight the large number of non-religious people in Washington in hopes of making atheists feel less alone and theists feel... A little, a little more inclined to talk. In the coming weeks, we'll be asking volunteers to record video testimonials and to be in future photo shoots. Watch one in four wa dot org for details. That's the number one in the number four wa dot org. The other thing is uh, we've got we've got a new event coming up for Ask an Atheist, ladies and gentlemen. Really, really, what is it? yes, as in sort of a repeat of what we did last year with Ask an Atheist Save Our Show, December 29th at 8 p.m. at the Jewel. Box Theater in Seattle. You will have a night of comedy in support of the show you're listening to right now, Ask an Atheist. Uh, we don't have a name or any major information yet, but we know Jeremy Whitman, uh, oh, yes. one, of the, one of the co-creators of the show and nationally touring comedian, will be in, around in the event. Uh, and stick- he's hilarious. I've seen him several times. He yeah. is really hilarious. He, he's, he is hilarious. So our, if you're tired of all of the, the crummy religious music and the reason for the season and all that, and you just need a break to get away from all all of that, uh, you know, between the holidays, in the holiday interregnum or whatever you call that. Go ahead and uh, December 29th, Jewel Box Theater up in Seattle. Sounds fancy, guys. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. So, let's go right into uh, what we, you know, one of our favorite, well, our, right now our only segment, but, but a, a really favored segment, Scripture Says what? what? I like how whenever we do this segment, someone, everyone else is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's part. Of, it's part of the. Doesn't attraction. matter. Doesn't matter who is in the studio when we're doing this. Someone always has to do. What? Yeah. Sometimes in the in the four room, you'll hear a bunch of people go Whoa, at the same time. <laughs> so uh, anyway, this comes to us from uh, Leviticus chapter eleven, verse one through six, paragraph fourteen, subsection five Jackson of the New five. International Version. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, "Say to the Israelites of all the animals that live on the land, these are the ones that you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax, which I believe I fought as a barbarian. No, 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 no. I ran into one of those at a bar at oh. 12:30 in the morning. Oh, jeez, oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. Though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. Rabbit? It is unclean for you. I didn't even think that rabbits had hoofs. They are pretty dirty, though. Yeah, they, they yeah, are pretty dirty. Are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, with all the reproduction and Depending stuff. Depending on how you define dirty. Yeah, right? dirty but right. I have eaten rabbit before, and it is pretty tasty. Rabbit is pretty tasty, uh, but apparently it chews the cud, and... Uh, 
Uh, it's unclean. But it, it, it chews the cud even though it's unclean. I don't know. What's... But I know that Becky does not follow this rule set anymore. But her stomach does. And I find that really amusing. That only be that... that Becky has like areas of biblical law and areas. Of, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I shouldn't think too hard about that. I guess. <laughs> Remind me never to feed her shrimp. Have uh, you seen no. her chewing cud? I have not seen her chewing cud. <laughs> no, but I. Uh, does she, I don't know. I think there's you... a website for that. <laughs> does she have a divided hoop? Was that Rule Thirty Four? <laughs> yeah, it, it might. It might be. We just told Rule Thirty Four. I, I just got kicked. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so. on to uh, on to other things. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, where'd that go? Um, dead air, um, dead, dead air. Dead air, yeah, okay, thank you, strong bad. Thanks for... <laughs> yeah, ra- rabbits... I'm glad someone got that. I'm being told to tell people what cut is, and to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I think it's just a, a mouth bolus of grass. I think, I, I think it's like when they're talking about, like, um, when cows eat grass, they kind of throw it back up a little bit. They vomit it back it. up. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's kind of disgusting Ruminant. and unclean. And for the record, rabbits don't do don't chew cud. You need yeah. multiple yeah, stomachs for don't. that. Moving on, this one's a little bit more clear <laughs> to me, but uh, I, I really dig it. And this comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 11 and 18, again of the New International Version. You may eat any clean bird, but these you may not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, the black kite, any kind of falcon. You need the Ren and Stimpy music behind this. <laughs> any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl. Couldn't the they o- just say owl? Owl. Like, but not burrow owls, though. Uh, that's off the list. The osprey, the cormorant, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. Can we get a screeching of tires? <laughs> yeah, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. uh, because uh, bats have feathers and cloacas. They uh, are birds. What? No, no. <laughs> oh, wait a second. This is biblical. Halitosis! Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then, the, you know, it's not on here, but the one with the four-legged insects always gets me. Again, that scripture <laughs> says what? And uh, the interesting thing about these is that, kind of tying in today's show, I... Uh, Clearly, there are some scientific issues with the Bible, and uh, and this is why you need Camp Quest Northwest. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. So, uh, Good if, segue. If you, uh, if you have a Bible verse or a verse of any religious text and we'd like to share it with us because it's fun or interesting or crazy or just scientifically inaccurate, you can go to askanatheist.tv, click on the big shiny red button, and let us know where you found it and what it is and why you think it's funny. So, uh, there's a breaking news story, ladies and gentlemen. Dun, dun, dun. Um, dun, dun, dun. Uh, I mean, we need a breaking news sounder. We did not practice that in advance either. <laughs> so it, it's really happening right now. And uh, there, there's a convention going on. And when a convention of any kind comes to town, it's not uncommon for local businesses to swim, swim in new customers and money. I know I make bank whenever there was a convention in Phoenix, for example. This has certainly been the case for Skepticon, the Midwest's largest gathering of atheists and skeptics in Springfield, Missouri this week. Weekend. Now, again, this is breaking. This is happening right now, and there is one exception. Uh, there's a store there called Gelato Mio, and it's an Italian ice cream shop uh, next to the convention center. Put up a sign telling convention goers that their business wasn't wanted, and the sign read this Skepticon is not welcome to my Christian business. Uh, and then, friend of the show, Jen McCright, noticed this and wrote about it on her uh, on uh, Blag Hag on uh, Free Thought blogs. And, uh, you know, as just like with the American Cancer Society, you guys, I mean, you guys saw this, is that, you know, on Facebook. Facebook and comments, phone calls were made. Um, internet justice is swift. Well, hold on. Let's let's also put this into proper perspective. Here. Okay. There's no difference between that and having a sign up that says whites only. Yeah. It's equally as offensive. Yeah. It's just there's not as much of an awareness. About also, it. kind of illegal, isn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 Civil rights. Civil Act, Rights Act, you know? 1965. Right. 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 Yeah. So, uh, but internet justice is swift, uneven, and full of cats. So after about an hour, uh, the sign was taken down, and a new sign was put up in its place, and it's re-letter in the window to the public. I sincerely apologize for posting for the posting of the note in the window. It was an Im- impulse reaction to an event I witnessed, and was only up for a few minutes before I came to my senses and 
realized it shouldn't have been up at all. I sincerely apologize for those whom I offended. All the best, Andy. This one is just signed. Okay, but but here's the confusing part of that. Okay, here we go. I have it on good authority that there is a list of vendors um, that give discounts to Skepticon attendees. Right. And Gelato Mio is listed on that list. You're kidding! No. <laughs> They're one of the wow. vendors that says, yeah, come on over here. I guess the Skepticon organizers contacted him and got him on the list. But then somebody heard about it and screamed at it. There uh, are multiple parties probably involved. I'd love to be a fly in the wall at the next board meeting. I, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> now, now, tell you what, if I saw that sign... Uh, that said, you know, whites only and, right, right, or basically. whatever. And yeah. then it went down and I said, I am really sorry for that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, so you would you would stay away. Damage is done. The, yeah. the, the, the lesson learned here is it's for the next 84 people who think about doing that. Right. And when you're at a baseball game, you argue with the ump not to change the call, uh-huh. but to remind the ump the next several calls, you're going to be watching them closely. Right, right. And that's what this uh, is all about. How would you respond to this? I just wouldn't go there. I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, if some, it would be saying like if uh, anything else. Like I, I know I am a white middle class American, mm. but if anyone said you know, like white middle class Americans not allowed here, it would be the same thing. Mm. You know, I I don't want to give someone a business who doesn't appreciate me. Yeah. You know? See, I might. Uh... I well, might... not me, but fellow Americans. Yeah, yeah. true that. I, I don't care what color you are. You I know? might go, uh, you know, just to say, and then be real obvious about it. I'm a skeptic on Gomer. I'm an atheist, and I'm here because you decided that turning my business away was, one, illegal and two, immoral. And I'm, I'm showing my support for somebody who's willing to, to change their ways, yeah. who's willing to go back. And I would talk about how they worship a, a zombie dead guy who's also his dad no, the what, whole time. You know, just I, I would I would just go... While you're licking the while ice cream while I'm eating the ice cream. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Yeah, so how about that zombie god of yours? How is that working out for you? No, I wouldn't so. give There's a Paradalia uh, joke in there somewhere with the ice cream. I'm thinking about yeah. it, but I just can't <laughs> put it together. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't give them my money. Money, I wouldn't utilize their services, but I'd probably run over to, I don't know, some craft store, get some corrugated plastic and a Sharpie, and write, I am an atheist on a board of plastic, and hold it out in front of this place. You do like the signs, though. That, that is yes, your stick. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> to talk about that, we'd have to talk about politics. We uh, don't want to stay away fair, from politics. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so if yeah. you, uh, th- like I said, it's, it's being called Gelato Gate already, because we needed more gates. Uh, but if you got anything, if you'd like to talk about that, you give us a call, 253-584-1480. Again, this is Ask an Atheist. And before we go to the break, I'd like to do a quick email. Uh, a few weeks ago, actually, I think it might have been the last time I was, no, it was, I think it was the last time I was on the air. Uh, we did an episode about the American Cancer Society, and we had uh, a bunch of people on, uh, got, you know, uh, Todd Stiefel, uh, Hemant Mehta, uh, the friendly atheist, and we were talking about the American Cancer Society and the fact that they turned down a quarter million dollars. They basically said no to half a million dollars of atheist money for the American Cancer Society. And Patrick from Texas writes with this follow-up. Folks, listening to your show uh, since a while, I only got to the American Cancer Society episode this week. As a scientist, here's my hypothesis on the episode turning the atheist donations down. One, the atheist has a large religious donor. Well, most do. Uh, Two, that donor is in close contact with the ACS, monitors how the ACS uses their money. Three, either atheist fears, uh, either the ACS lo- fears to lose those donations, or the donor actually told them directly or after being asked that they will lose the large donor's donations if they accept the atheist's organization's donations. Uh, finally, the ACS reacted accordingly to maximize its donations, but cannot reveal the, the reason. You may be able to test this hy- hypothesis by looking at the uh, published donor list or getting them via a freedom of information request. I find it strange that you have not considered this in the show. Seems straightforward to me, but hey, I might be totally off. Well, one thing. You guys were talking about this. Sorry, uh, small point of order. They're a private organization, so it'd be a, a subpoena, not a FOIA. You do realize we're not under Robert, Robert's rules of order. You don't have to say point of order. You can just let us know. <laughs> just, just letting you know. <laughs> you mean I can stop raising my hand? Yeah. So yeah. We, don't have to, we don't have to second this motion? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, it's a private organization. I mean, it's a private charity organization, and they are required to publish certain things. So you can just wait for those, public, those, uh, those documents to be released. But yeah, freedom of information... Uh, freedom of information thing isn't important. My take on this, um, it, you know, that might be true that they have a large religious donor uh, that they're turning down, or that say they will go away if you don't get the money. Uh, I don't care. I mean, my good name is being sullied. My, my movement is being told that we're not good enough for, for cancer research. I, uh, I don't 
Why should I support any... I don't care what their reasons are. I don't care how good they are. If we're being thrown under... And this is... I guess maybe this is different between gelato. The sort of the inverse between the gelato thing and this is that we're being thrown under the bus. That, that if they're throwing us under the bus, I don't want their money. Mm-hmm. You know, it's... Or I don't want to give them my money. I don't want to, I don't want to have any commerce with them whatsoever. And, uh, I, you know... It, I understand that they that they have to fight. You know, they're not really doing cancer research. They're about cancer awareness. But, uh, you know, do you guys have a take on well, this? You, uh, if anyone from the American Cancer Society is listening right now, this is how you maximize your donations. Accept money that is being given to you, especially if it <laughs> well, is a very significant amount of money. And that's yeah. the core problem. What they did is they politicized donations. I mean, yeah. if they had remained completely neutral on the topic and said to this religious donor, look, money's money, green's green, don't matter what color. Right. What you know. if you get a large religious donation from somebody who believes that cancer is treated with prayer, and they say that uh, if you suggest that modern medicine can fight cancer, we're not going to give you your money. Where does this end? Right. Where, where, but where, the problem is ACS messed up when they politicized the money. It, yeah, that's true. That's, that's also true. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, people have also been asking me what we're doing about this, and we are trying to put together uh, some fundraising for other cancer awareness organizations. Uh, we're going to get back in contact with uh, the, the Todd Stiefel Foundation and, and do something. We're not done with this. And as you said before, if somebody from the American Cancer Society would like to respond, we've talked about this on the blog. The show notes for this episode are pretty extensive, and they include a release that we got from the American Cancer Society. You can see that at askanatheist.tv. But, uh... Yeah, contact us, let us know, talk to us. And if you give us a mea culpa, I might change my mind, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the long and short of it. You said it basically the, exactly how I was going to. <laughs> so. Thank you for stealing my glory, Sam. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, I pre-stole. This is Ask an Atheist, 253-584-1480. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. Don't believe in God? Join the club. Humanists, atheists, and freethinkers have joined the American Humanist Association since 1941 to advocate for progressive values and equality for non-theists in America. Located in Washington, D.C., the American Humanist Association lobbies Congress on humanist issues, protects the rights of atheists in the courts, and supports more than 140 local chapters. Visit us at AmericanHumanist.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter to learn how you can join the club today. Did you know that not a single psychic or paranormal event has ever been reproduced? Have you ever wondered about the effectiveness of faith healing, Reiki, or sports bracelets? Was 9-11 an inside job, or is that all just another unproven conspiracy theory? Come check out the Seattle Skeptics, a group focused on lively debates and a critical examination of pseudoscience, alternative medicine, and anything else that hasn't held up to the light of the scientific method. Seattle Skeptics was created for those who require a higher bar of evidence than gut feelings or blind belief. We're not contrarians or cynics, we just want to see the evidence. And so should you. Check us out at seattleskeptics.org That's seattleskeptics.org Org. If you enjoy the programming we create here on Ask an Atheist, please make a contribution with us. Your sponsorship helps keep our show on the air and improve the quality of our broadcasts. Donors get access to exclusive Ask an Atheist content. Don't make us beg. Please go to askanatheist.tv and contribute today. Billy! Billy! Billy, I am the Queen of England. You must give me your lunch money. Why? Because um, it will explode. I don't know. I'm the Queen of England. I know things. That makes sense. Here you go. Wait, Billy. Just because an authority says it doesn't make it true. Come to Camp Quest Northwest, where you'll learn critical thinking and science in a fun-filled week-long nature camp. No! Camp Quest Northwest can be found at campquestnorthwest.org. Donations and volunteers accepted. The devil is not real. I'm melting! Get used to that commercial, because you're going to be hearing it a lot. <laughs> I was mouthing pretty much everything along, like, as it was going on. <laughs> this is like, Ask an Atheist. The devil is not real. 253-584-1480. The devil is not real. <laughs> and uh, we are actually talking about uh, Camp Quest Northwest this week. Uh, my name is Sam. With me is Nick and Chuck. Chuck, Chuck, what is what is your position in the Camp Quest Northwest organization? You're, you're like, the head honcho, I'm right? the president of Camp Quest Northwest. Yeah. You're, you're, you're yes. uh, the Supreme commander of Camp Quest. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm the guy who takes the blame when stuff goes wrong and uh, busily delegates when uh, useful stuff needs to be done. I think we right. could call him the self-appointed corrupt despot. Not self-appointed. Not self-appointed. <laughs> self- no, not uh, just, self-appointed. Just a plain old, yeah. like, duly elected. Duly, duly elected. Corrupt.
distracted. Yeah, corrupt yeah. despot. Or the guy who didn't step backwards when they asked for a volunteer. Right. right. <laughs> oh, I know that one. God, I don't know that one. Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, Camp Quest is actually a national. Oh, wait, no, it's an international organization. It now, is an international it? organization. So, so tell us about this. So, uh, historically, it goes back to 1995. Edwin Kagan was part of uh, uh, Free Inquiry Group of Cincinnati and was at a. Uh, let's see, I'm going to get this. It's uh, Kodesh uh, Council for Secular C- Council of Democratic and Secular Humanism. Mm. Uh, now it's known for Council Council for Secular Huni- Humanism. Okay, uh, made a uh, re- uh, just a you know why don't we do this and uh, we need to start a, a camp for kids. Right, uh, right. And he was an Eagle Scout, so he had many many years of, of the camp experience. And there's an issue with Eagle Scouts. In Correct. This country, and that right? was what it was. It was there was a lot of controversy in the middle '90s about e- Eagle Scout uh, Scout Scouts kicking out uh, uh, gay and non-believer um, uh, Boy Scouts. Right. And uh, it said. You know, Edwin was like, "Well, you know what? We we need something similar, but for for kids who are non-believers or from from freethinker families, we so, try not to label kids, but yeah, yeah." It started out in Cincinnati, correct? Then, I'm guessing, and and now where are I mean, other than here, clearly, where are they? Uh, I, it's probably you can go to campquest.org, but there's a lot of chapters in the U.S. They're growing every year. They're bringing a couple more online. Yeah, there's um, uh, uh, UK, and there's two in Canada. So it's an international organization at this point. There's, right. There's a lot going. On. Okay, and then so Camp Quest Northwest is here in the Pacific Northwest. We are a region. chapter, yes. Yeah. So how did how did Camp Quest Northwest get off the ground? So uh, my son, who's thirteen, has been to Camp Quest West in California, Northern California, for three years running. Okay. You know, as a parent, I heard about it. I listened to a ton of podcasts, including uh, Ask, Ask an Atheist. Ding. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Shameless plug <laughs> on our own show. <laughs> I think we can plug our own show. Of course, yeah, of yeah, okay. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and a while back, uh, you know, uh, he, he's you know nine, ten years old, and uh, getting into summer camps. And uh, I heard about this Camp Quest thing, and I looked up, and I was pretty disappointed to see that there wasn't one in Washington. But uh, right. you know, love going to wine country and stuff, and figured, mm-hmm. hey, why not drop them off in the middle and keep on heading south and uh, <laughs> <laughs> have a good pay, good vacation? So, uh, figured, why not? Sent them to Camp Quest West, and I figured, you know, being nine, ten years old, it'll be a passing thing, and he'll be like. You know, I want to do uh, computer camp next year and surfing camp the next year after that and whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was quite surprised when we got him back and he was dirty and had a smile on his face and couldn't couldn't wait to come back the next year. That was one of the first things he said. And all, throughout the entire year after that, all he heard is just at dinner periodically, it'd just be another story about this guy did this at Camp Quest and all that. So you became uh, president of Camp Quest Northwest <laughs> because you believe in what Camp Quest is doing and you think it really works, uh, clearly. Uh, yes. Not only are you the president, you are also a client. I'm also a client. All yes. right, and cool, I actually yeah. volunteer with Camp Quest West <laughs> as well, too. Yes. Very, very yes. good. Now, one of the things that I like to talk about, and one of the, and th- 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 I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is one of the ways I measured the success of our show is uh, when I, I was interested in the, in the Camp Quest idea, especially since Becky is an educator and stuff, you know, and so it's like, we're, this is something we talk about a lot, right, right, right. education from an atheist perspective, and um, I went to the first meeting, and we were talking about when the camp would actually get off the ground, and you were like, well, maybe 2013, if we have the money. We wanted together. to be careful, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, <laughs> the end of the world happened. <laughs> is We, we began our, our, our countdown to backpedaling, and with it, uh, Seattle Atheist started Rapture Relief as sort of a uh, you know as sort of a, a, a team uh, tag team on this thing, mm-hmm. and what they were doing is they were raising money for uh, for if the rapture were to occur to help people. But if if for some reason it didn't occur, which clearly it has it not, it didn't. Yeah, hey, hello, yep, ding. we're still here. Uh, <laughs> The money would go to Camp Quest Northwest, Correct. and when that was going on, and we were we were getting the, the national press or the international press, I got translated into Vietnamese. I didn't. Eat, it was so cool. But, wow. <laughs> uh, I believe the picture with uh, with me and Becky standing on the street corner holding up the sign hit Reuters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, and then after all that was going down, we're starting to realize how well the Rapture Relief Program was going. You're like, oh yeah, we're doing the camp in 2012. It's already done. <laughs> And then it's like, yes, we have had a positive effect on the world. It was one of our board meetings, and it just it was like one of these ideas that started to spread. And yeah, you know, John looked at me, I looked at him, all right, fine, let's do it. And that, <laughs> and then it. the left behind event in October yes. that we yes. went to is that you guys actually got a big check for seventy five hundred dollars from, Se- yeah. from Seattle, Seattle Atheist. Atheist yeah. It's the first time I'd ever seen a big check like that. It now, was neat. How do you fit that in the? You fold it a couple of times and you okay. jump on it, but oh, it, it okay. works. Yeah. All right, cool, absolutely, yeah. So, but into the world's largest wallet, I imagine. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a, a lot, lot of, of money. wallet like that. 
That way I can justify taking people's money. Absolutely. So <laughs> we're on a show called Ask an Atheist. We're talking about Camp Quest, which is a skeptical and, and sort of free thought oriented camp. And people are going to ask us, um, there's sort of two minds here. So people are going to ask us, aren't you going to go make them communists? Because, you know, atheism is commie atheism. And the other side is some, some skeptical people are going to be like, are you going to make them secret Methodists or something like that? Uh, <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> yeah. So are you indoctrinating children? Uh, first things first, I always find that the other side tends to accuse us of things that they happen to be doing themselves. Of course. Uh, but in this sense, no, we're not making children salivate over food while they hold their hands together and say <laughs> prayers to a sky daddy. So, right. No, that is in fact not the case. But if we were to call it indoctrination of any form, it would be teaching these kids to question. Mm -hmm. Showing them things that they should be skeptical of, and then showing them why they should be skeptical of them, yeah. to ask questions. I'm wrong all the time. And I love it when some kid calls me on it. <laughs> I, I do, too. Happens to all the time. I got one living with me. And, uh, <laughs> and it's getting about the age where he thinks yes, you're wrong about yes. a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, the tools that they're going to learn at a camp like this are important and go beyond just atheism. This, this isn't really about how not to be religious. It's more how to think skeptically Correct. and critical thinking skills and, and interest in science and stuff like that. How The true test is when you throw something like they've never seen before, like homeopathy. A lot of kids have never seen this. And you throw it in front of them, and then you see that frown across their face go, wait a minute. Yeah. Water? <laughs> and you teach them Avogadro's number, and they're like, there's nothing in it. Yeah. But this is real? And then you realize that they've abstracted the concept. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. see kids do that. And, and this really is the major difference between Camp Quest and really most other camps. Correct. Is, is Becky talked about a lot. She did a lot of day camp stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm from the city. We don't do camps. Of course. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, is and all the camps that she went to were vaguely religious or musical and had some religious overtones or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a, it's a slight fufa, you know, kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and so people tend to think that uh, you know. Uh, I mean, it's really, it's truly an alternative. Is is it gives it's none of the religion and it's about. There are fifty two weeks in the year, right? And my son has been chased around the neighborhood with by believer kids who said he was going to hell. Yeah, he's been sitting at dinner with uh, friends, parents who have. Uh, when my son volunteered the fact that he just doesn't live in a religious family and it's nothing to him, you know, the the mother shrieked, said, "You're going to hell," and sent him to tears. Yeah, you know? and so I realized, wow, we're in Seattle. This is like probably the most most religiously liberal place in the country and uh, we see this here mm -hmm. so uh, the other 51 weeks out of the year he he is not able to find people like him and that's what he comes home and says from Camp Quest West there are people like me there yeah absolutely and this is something that is really important to me is that everybody I, I mean the Pacific Northwest is is it's something I've said is it's not really like every anywhere else I've lived, I Correct, call it like yes. a little slice of Middle Earth. It's it's just it's so much liberal, and people seem to and, and think a little bit more. And and it's just it's I, I I've actually said it's not like real life. And then somebody from here got offended. It's like, what you want to go live in real life? No, I came here for this. Because this is why I'm here. Yes, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really great. Right. Uh, and um, and so you'd think with the liberal thinking and stuff like that, that people would be more accepting. It's of this. not. It's. Totally it's not. not. These parents who did that were like Obama Democrats. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter where you come from, what your political bent is. The supernatural belief systems tends to just cross over all of them. Yeah, yeah. And 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 here's the thing: is 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 it, I, we've called it NPR ecumenicalism. Right, uh, right, right. Is right. Uh, Barbara Bradley Haggerty uh, exactly yeah, is that exactly. Uh, NPR is is acceptable? It was willing to accept any religion you can name. Right. Uh, you know, uh, like from from Methodists to Eck and Scientology. Yep. They're okay with it. Unless you're a non-believer. Then there is something wrong with you. It's, it's, have you, no, you listen to a lot of NPR. Have you noticed this? Non-belief <laughs> is the odd man out, right? Well, I mean, I haven't listened to too much religious like programming full stop. But I have noticed that there's, like, yeah, there is this kind of mindset, even... Uh, it's this it, assumption that everybody's religious in some way. Yeah, you know, it's, you it's kind of like, I, 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 uh, I, oh, jeez, what was it? In 2004, I think I was watching uh, the Republican National Committee on, uh, on, on the TV, mm -hmm. and there was this one quote that stuck with me, even now, like, uh, oh, seven years later? Yeah that there was this one woman, she got so many cheers from, granted, a conservative audience, but she said, 
The First Amendment guarantees freedom of religion, not freedom from it. A, yeah. And that just made me wretch. It's a pretty common trope. But I was actually specific, spe- specifically of NPR, where when they mention religion on the show, it's always positive about religion unless you're not. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, they, I, they I, love the new atheist I, phrase. They well, do. They I, love I haven't even, or like I said, I haven't heard them talk about it on it. So fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah. So even in a liberal place like the Pacific Northwest, one of the most liberal places in America, it's th- th- there's a lot of religious anger. There's well, it's even worse. I mean, I spent, a, hate. I spent a week at Camp Quest, Ohio as a counselor so I could get ready to do this here in the Northwest. And yeah. it's even worse there as far as, indo- uh, not indoctrination, that the, the well. kids living in an area where the rest of the kids that are around them are indoctrinated with this religious belief. Yeah. I saw kids tearfully describing in circles what it was like to be the non-believer in their class. Mm. So, the Northwest is a lot nicer, but uh, it's it's a lot worse in some places. Yeah, that, that it is. Uh, and every time I mention one, I get in trouble. So I will uh, I'll avoid that for now. <laughs> but having been from the Midwest, I, I or having I'm from the Midwest, I know what you're talking about. Right, right. But uh, so, all right, we're talking about sort of what's happening around the camp, the organizations involved, why it's necessary. What uh, what will the camp look like when they show up? What are parents and children? Uh, what are they going to see when they get? Well, if there? you were to close your eyes and just sort of appear in the middle of the camp and and not know that it's Camp Quest, you would think it's just basically your everyday average overnight camp. It's canoeing, kayaking, bows and arrows, archery, uh, climbing walls, running through trails, kids playing games, marshmallows, pretty much anything you can imagine for an overnight camp. Kids making arts and crafts, painting their faces, whatever. I mean, all, all just the fun stuff you do when you you know, you know, get filthy, dirty, and, and you end up having just a great time at camp, and it's something you think about all year long. I did overnight camp, too, when I was a kid. Same sure, thing. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's what, that is going to look like any other camp. Basically, any other camp. I, I mean, don't know the, what camps look like. So. Well, just, uh, <laughs> it's an outdoor camp with cabins the kids sleep in. You know, there's two counselors to every cabin, and we have the you know the rule of three and stuff to to protect. And you know, it's it's just everyday average overnight camp. So like a church camp without the church. We have an invisible deity, actually. Believe it or not. What? Really? Yes, actually. Yeah. Really? Every, it, every it, camp it, has an invisible deity, and one of the one of the object lessons behind it is to teach kids that you can't disprove a negative. When someone says, "Do you prove there's there's no God?" My first reaction is, "You can't. You can't right. prove a negative. All right. You can only provide proof of something." So my response to that is, "Well, you need to provide me proof of your God." So so obviously, since it's the Northwest, we have the invisible Sasquatch. And <laughs> in Ohio, we've got the invisible unicorns. Right. Um. Uh, and so. So the idea is you get this, uh, if you can prove that such thing doesn't exist, you get this pre-in God retrust, in God retrust, hundred dollar bill. Wow. Of course, no kid has ever gotten it because yeah. there's, it's impossible to prove something invisible doesn't exist. <laughs> of course. And yeah. Kids come up with wonderfully convoluted ways of saying, well, there's footprints and what about all these things? And, and, and then as an adult, we can come up with ways of explaining against that and everything. It's just like having a debate with a religious believer. It's just, you can go around and it's fascinating and fun. It's, you can go around forever. It's in fact a, ba- a debate just like with a religious believer. <laughs> Correct. Because Correct. there's money involved. <laughs> and if these Ask kids, an atheist, 253-584-1480. <laughs> and if these kids find some way to magically disprove a, or to prove a negative or whatever, <laughs> then I think they actually deserve a hundred bucks because they're doing something <laughs> that no one has been able right. to do. Throughout like, time. Yeah. 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 Yes. This, this goes you back, can't address all possibilities and prove something doesn't exist. Exactly. Right? exactly. And this goes back to a workhorse of Ask an Atheist. Right. It's the phrase uh, we agnosticism is a statement of belief, or is a statement of not Knowledge. Right. Atheism is a statement of belief. I screwed it up anyway, but That's I think okay. you know where I'm That's going. Okay. Yeah. 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 So where where is Camp Quest Northwest going to be this uh, 2012? Uh, this in 2012 in August uh, August 15th 2012 to August 21st 2012 it's going to be at Camp Kirby okay. on Samish Island. Uh, oh, it's on an island. On yeah. an island. Well, it's, it doesn't feel like an island, but it's oh, okay. it's along the coast, and so it's it's in the rain the San Juan rain shadow. So it, we That's should up by Bellingham. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we're stones throw away from Canada. Nice. All right. Yep. Nice country up there. I like. Oh it. yes. Yeah. No. I, I I've only been up there a couple times, but it's great. So what what sort of events are you going to be having at this uh, event? He says, actually knowing some of this. <laughs> Well, we got we okay. So to take a step back, January first is when we have signups. So okay. if you're interested in send, send, sending your kid ages eight to fifteen mm-hmm. to this camp, you can sign up as of January first. So what are we going to do? Well, official programming when we kind of build this big matrix and figure out what we're going to do doesn't start until you know we start working on that after. But we have a need for people to come in and do stuff. And I know Sam, we th- I think we got you on the hook <laughs> for uh, for yeah. doing some crystal radio. We want to do some triangulation. Well, 
well, kind of stuff. We're hope I'm hoping to do two two units on radio. Yep. Uh, well, actually, kind of three units on radio. One is I want to uh, is I want to te- I want kids to see how I fell in love with radio, and it's about crystals yes. and action at a distance yes. and the, the 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 electrical resonance of crystals. It sounds completely like man, it's man, magic, right? magical, right? Yeah, right? But no, it's it's a radio. Right. It's it's how it's how this works. How what we're doing. This is not magic. This is not religious. God is not involved. It's just technology, and here's how the technology works. And it doesn't require a battery. It's a, it's a circuit powered entirely from energy received from the air. It's an incredible idea, and I, I'm hoping to use it. This, this is where it might get difficult, is I'm hoping to use this for some direction finding uh, stuff where they have to actually go and or throughout the camp and find a transmitter and then discover a cache of, I don't know, candy or whatever you give. Whatever, some reward for doing it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Boy, Sam, I wonder if you're a radio geek or no, not. I'm not at all. I yeah. have not been to your office and seen all your <laughs> all your fancy old radios that I really, really want to have <laughs> in my own house. Uh, and then the other thing is is uh, you will see, on am telling you right now, an uh, episode of Ask an Atheist <laughs> produced by the children. We want to see that. We really want to see that. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. we're, we're going to try to do an episode up there. And then the other thing is like the transmitter. I'm hoping to do like a number station where there's a secret code yes. and yes. maybe work with some, some math unit or something like that. Yep. So it's stuff like that. But you're also, I want to take a minute and on the air and in front of everybody, hey, Becky. Aren't you looking for a uh, educator? <laughs> so the interesting thing is, is that w- the pedagogical approach to presenting information to these kids and getting them to understand it is not something a, a layman can do. So right. yeah, we are looking for professionals who are able to craft these craft these lessons in a way that the kids can understand them, and we can get you know some enriching experience going on. And here. it just so happens there's somebody in the room who can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let Becky know that she should help. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, Camp Quest sounds fantastic. It sounds like Thank a you. lot of fun. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, to doing some of the doing some of the radio stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> anyway, this is Ask an Atheist two five three five eight four fourteen eighty. We are talking about Camp Quest Northwest and those awesome commercials that uh, that we've been airing. The devil's not real. Yes. Poof. Talk to you in a minute. <laughs> Secular humanism is a non-theistic view of the universe built on a foundation of reason, science, and democracy. Humanists support intellectual freedom and critical thinking, and we hold that human beings are autonomous centers of moral development. The Humanists of Washington is the oldest humanist organization in the state and offers a community of free thinkers who educate the public and celebrate life. For information on how you can be a part of the humanist activities in the Puget Sound area, become a member of the Humanists of Washington today. Visit humanistsofwashington.org. Tacoma Telematics wants to help you connect with your clients. We can give you a top-notch web presence. Tacoma Telematics can take your website to the next level and make it an essential part of your business marketing, but that's not all. Want VoIP? We've got it, bringing large corporation phone systems capability at mom-and-pop prices. We build intuitive interfaces to help you manage your resources quickly and efficiently. Take advantage of our holistic approach to make your business communication succeed effortlessly. At Tacoma Telematics, we're committed to personal and professional integrity, open communication and long-term relationships. See us at TacomaTelematics.com. Sigmund Freud said the voice of the intellect is a soft one, but it does not rest until it has gained a hearing. Whether you're at a point in life where you are questioning your beliefs or if you've always been an atheist or agnostic, the Auburn Free Thought Society is a place where your own voice of intellect will be heard. You'll interact with like-minded people, engage in intellectual conversation, and share your experiences with others in the Auburn, Washington area. At Auburn Free Thought Society, we encourage critical thought and reason. For details, find us on Facebook and on meetup.com. Auburn Free Thought Society. Have real discussion and share real ideas freely. You can advertise on Ask an Atheist on the radio, on our website, and in our podcast. People just like you who have the same interests are listening right now, just like you are. And thousands will download this podcast and listen to it later. If you have a product, service, or idea to sell, people here in the Pacific Northwest and people around the world, thousands will hear your message. Let us help you sell your product, service, or idea. Contact us at advertising at askanatheist.tv. That's advertising at askanatheist.tv. <laughs> Not again! Billy, I'm a certified ghost expert! Wow, that's so credible! Billy, your great-great-grandmother says she loves you, and to give me your lunch money! Aw, anything for family! Here you go! 
Wait, Billy! Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence! Come to Camp Quest Northwest, where you'll learn critical thinking and science in a fun-filled, week-long nature camp. No! Camp Quest Northwest can be found at campquestnorthwest.org. Donations and volunteers accepted. The devil is not real. I know. <laughs> So the voices on on that commercial are uh, John Kaiser, who has done so much for Seattle Atheists and Camp Quest North and everything, and uh, uh, somebody's been on the show a couple times, Kyle. As, uh, yeah, Kyle, another really hilarious person. As the devil is not real. <laughs> <laughs> No. Ask an atheist two five three five eight four fourteen eighty. So right now, Camp Quest Northwest is looking for uh, volunteers. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're, they're, what sort of volu- stuff can they volunteer? We for? have people who want. You know, we haven't done programming yet. So if you've got some spe- special skill you want to use, we need you. We want you to sign up with us. So you can go to campquestnorthwest.org, and you can find a little little menu item that says join us and there's a volunteer list you can get on cool. we post questions on there we need somebody to do this we need somebody to do that get on the list and say I can do this and then sign up for the camp start uh, January 1st January 1st that includes uh, campers and staff so if you want to be a staff member sign up you got to be able to pass a background check mm. you got to be able to have an interview you got to be able to work well with kids and you got to be able to run hard from 7.30 in the morning to 10.30 at night <laughs> and I'll be honest when I did it I was going from 6.30 in the morning till 1 or 2 at night I did it for a full week it's a lot of work that is the problem for me is i am, <laughs> I am an evening person so. yeah and i think the more that i hear about camp quest the more i want to be involved you know Absolutely, so i yeah. you know and i uh, I, I don't think they're going to have a rush unit for the record well <laughs> come on <laughs> well we, would, we will have come a on. dance this is the part of well, the show where sam but i don't Nick I, is one dimensional but i don't <laughs> Come on, I like other bands besides I know Rush. you do, I know you do. Uh, but, uh, now I lost my train of thought. Thanks oh, a lot, No, volunteering. Sam. Volunteering. Oh, okay, yes. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know too much about Camp Quest until yesterday uh-huh. when we had this uh, kind of... Uh, the great. taste of Camp Quest. Yes. Yes. And ever since then, like, everyone involved is really great. I only knew, like, two people there. I'm but, absolutely amazed at the people who have gotten involved. It's, yeah, it's been yeah, incredible. and it's yeah. I, I, I uh, these are really really great people. And you would kid, you would think it'd be hard, but uh, people are busy. Yeah, but th- this attracts people. It's a yeah. it's a really interesting idea. And yep. I imagine there's going to be people who are interested from here. So where do they go if they want to talk to you again? If they want to talk to me, they can they can go to campquestnorthwest.org. They, there's a contact us link. Uh, you can contact me, Chuck W at campquestnorthwest.org. I'll be happy to take your questions directly. Um, or you can, well, like I said, sign up for the list. I mean, the last our last event-based thing was yesterday, okay. Taste of Camp Quest, and then the next thing we're going to do is the full week camp. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So well, it's a, it's a haul. It, it, it seems like a lot of time, but we got a lot of work ahead of us. So well, yeah, nine months to put together a week of material. It's for, very hard to do with well, for like twelve hours or yes. fourteen hours yeah, a day. That's correct. Yeah. With backups, I mean, yeah. you know, stuff will go wrong. So mm-hmm. yeah. and that's why you need volunteers. Correct. So, <laughs> volunteers and, with expertise. <laughs> and lots and lots and lots of coffee for the staff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Permanently boiling pot. Yes. yes. So we haven't actually done emails in a bit. So we should, uh, I think we should tackle a few of these. So uh, other than the email I just did, but you know how it is. So, email says what? E- yeah, email says what? <laughs> All right. So this this one's actually kind of local. This is Chris from Port Orchard, Washington. And he's writing about Christian studies. And he writes, tonight I noticed Christian uh, Christian studies ad in the corner of the screen while I listened to your show. After I got over the irony, I actually got to thinking. I've often heard the, heard the phrase, the best way to turn a Christian into an atheist is to have them read the Bible. I expect a lot of religious people go into these Christian, Judaic, Islamic studies classes looking to learn more about their religion. But do they come out still religious? I have never participated in one of these classes myself, but I expect that a Christian studies course would actually have you actively reading the Bible and reading it closely at that. Do any of you have any expertise with this sort of thing? Do you think these religious classes create more non-religious people than religious? Well, uh, if you look at Bart Ehrman, he's a classic example. Mm-hmm. Um, he came out of a full, full-on religious organ, uh, uh, education yeah. and realized this is not real. <laughs> the scripture just does not add up. Yeah, yeah. When you really look at it at the level he has, and this is professorial level, this is beyond PhD. I, 
I read the Bible as a kid, and that was, if you listen to my episode of Living After Faith, I actually get into that pretty specifically, but I actually deciding that I wasn't Christian actually involved reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. I know for in Rich's case, uh, that was one of the ways that led to his atheism, is the fact that he has read the Bible umpteen times. So, And I don't, I don't know anyone who can quote the Bible better than Rich. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the thing is, though, about these religious studies classes, especially the Christian ones, especially the, the uh, millennial dispensationalist ones, but I Everybody does this. When you is every religion cherry picks. Every religion says this part of the Bible is real. This part of the Bible is allegorical. Every you know or uh, well, there's a certain irony that I've always found strange with these religious classes, and that is when you talk to the the general believer who doesn't have a religious uh, education background, they'll say just read the scripture and the word of God will talk through it to you. So it's yeah. as if this this you're, you're opening this lens to your heart, if you will. So why do you need the religious classes? What will the religious class do to you. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't somebody like that be against such classes? But they also they make you read the religious text in their construct, Correct, which, yeah. which means you got the, the you have blinders on. You're not actually reading the Bible. You're being taught how to fail to read the Bible at that point. You know, I've always wondered about the professors of those kinds of classes. Not professors. Uh, oh, okay. Well, no, it's late. Well, if it, let's say you had a college class and they were just teaching the Bible as literature, oh, how oh, okay. those how those people might see the Bible. Basically, I don't know if they would be religious since they pro they'd probably be able to quote the Bible better than Rich Lyons could. Uh, it, yeah, I, I don't know about that, I, but I don't. Well, yeah, it's a, you hear a lot of it. I've I've talked to one of them who's part of Camp Quest Ohio, and it's like um, the innocence is gone once you've read all this and you've gone through the background and the history and the archaeology. You realize, wow, this is just a mess. Yeah. I, I wish I hadn't appealed back so many layers of the onion. You know? <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, it, yeah. Sometimes when you know things about the Bible, you can just like uh, when people quote Leviticus eighteen twenty two, you know the thing that condemns homosexuality. Right. I like to say, well, eating a bacon cheeseburger is twice as bad as being gay according to the Bible because you're eating pork and or you're eating pig and you're but if, meat if you dairy. if you read, and I prefer to do it on Sunday. Yes, <laughs> if you read the Bible with, through their you know with their cultural background, you're not really reading the Bible. You're reading parts of the Bible and you're being told how to interpret it. Right. So and the other thing is these these religious studies classes, uh, not the the university level ones, but the ones run by religion to sort of indoctrinate you into that religion, uh, they're not taught by professors. They're taught just by, you know, usually by lay people um, or, or somebody in the clergy of that church. So, All right, Our next email comes to us from Kevin from Florida, and it's about coming out. Unlike most people who have concerns about coming out, I am not worried about what my parents might do to me. I am a 35-year-old adult with my own home, job, vehicle, and other resources, so there really isn't anything that my parents could do to me other than being an annoyance. That's good. Yeah, that's actually kind of where, where I was. What does concern me is how my parents will feel about their role in my lack of faith. Both of my parents were not very active in the church when I was, young, when I was a young child, but were not very active while I was a teenager, yet have recently become very active again. I was a little bit surprised to find out that they had become very religious, but then I remembered that they also had been that way up until I was about eight or nine years old. So my concern here is that my parents will blame themselves for not sufficiently indoctrinating me or, or for giving me the Bible that they will probably assume I must have misunderstood or both. Do you have any experience with how hard parents can come down on themselves in situations like this? Wait. There's a disappointed set of parents out there? <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I doubt this is going to be the first time. Well, you had a bit of a, a, a spill with that, didn't you, Nick? With your with your mom? Uh, a little bit, not very much, though. I mean, like recently, she has come to grips with the fact that I am an atheist. Mm -hmm. And you know, granted, my 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 mom is religious. My dad isn't really, um, but she's not as religious as like your even your average American. Yeah. So uh, that you know, and this was just within the last couple weeks that we made a lot of headway. Okay, so that that was very good, and I'm very thankful for that. My my, uh, to be honest with you, I I don't have any experience with this. Uh, uh, I mean, you could sort of play up the positive aspects of this. You you taught a kid to think for himself. That's nice. I mean, Camp Quest would approve. I think. Oh yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, there's other ways which they probably have helped you. Clearly, you have your own home, job, vehicle. You're doing pretty well. Uh, I, I would underscore those things and just say, you know... This Don't the Christians say you'll know them by their fruits? Yeah, there you go. I'll leave that sit, I think. <laughs> I was talking about the home job. Oh, vehicle, okay. but, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> are you coming out too? <laughs> Ouch. Wait, what? Uh, Sam says just, what? Yeah, we just went off the. Uh... <laughs> Next email, Jim from Queensbury, New York. I can't believe I did that. Uh, 
My question is whether it is sufficient to simply ask for scientific proof. Do we need atheistic apologetics? Is Christian apologetics just mental gymnastics? How would you respond to this commenter or, or his reviews about destroying Dawkins, the irony of Francis Collins treating Hitchens? I certainly am unable to use big philosophy terms like he, but should I have to? So, I mean, first thing that first thing out, we got to describe what apologetics is. And the thing about apologetics is that it's not only recently has apologetics become how you talk to people who are not of your faith, especially in Christianity, because where when apologetics was developed in history, there really wasn't anybody else who was not a, an ostracized part of your society. Everybody around you, everybody you were talking to, was a Christian, and. So so what apologetics was for was for keeping the faithful faithful. It was it was somebody would have a crisis of faith and they'd have these logical tricks that would say, yeah, you know, why does evil exist in the world? Because God, blah blah blah, you know, this that and the other thing. Quoting it's, the story of Job. Yeah, story of Job, stuff like that. And uh, I always wondered what about the kids, Job's kids. Right. They got replaced at the end. They are property. Why is <laughs> oh, that's tragic? They don't count. Oh, tell my son that. <laughs> Next time he asks for asks for the uh, Xbox Live thing that he wants. Oh yes, you heard yeah. that one. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, is there is there an Xbox? That's what today? he wants for the holidays. Oh yes. boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I watch all my time disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Xbox. Exactly. But uh, and they're kind of pricey. <laughs> but I, I mean, my answer to whether or not atheists need apologetics is no, we don't because right. there's apologetics is usually used in the absence of evidence and empiricism. And we have evidence. We have empiricism. The you know radio works because there's evidence that it works. There, there, it, it's not magical. We don't need to have logical tricks to trick us into believing things. We don't need to take radio on faith. We can actually study radio and figure out how it works. And it works everywhere on the planet. Yeah, and right? it works everywhere on the planet. Yeah. And works everywhere in space, according <laughs> to radio astronomy. We know that radio works hundreds of thousands of light years from here. So, you know... And it can it, it can be explained. If you don't understand it, that doesn't mean it can't be explained. And right. these things are evident if you just take the time to learn them. Yeah. And it, science, the scientific method is a beautiful piece. But yet, as skeptics, we're always open to new evidence. Yes, exactly. I can have uh, that light switch work every time, but it may not work the next time. Yeah, all you need is for gravity to fail to work once. Once. And something changes. That's all it takes. And the difference between them and us is that we encourage people to try and disprove things. Because every time you disprove something, then you learn something more. Oh, the best scientific discoveries always start with, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, try and dis try and break the laws of physics, please. We want that to happen. We yeah. don't get upset when people try to break the laws. <laughs> you watch an apologist get upset when you debate with them. They turn red in the face and they're angry. That's defense now, do you think we need to use... Uh, he's ta he talks in this email about the, the big phil uh, philosophical terms. And this this was really... I, he hasn't been on the show in a while, but Casey was really into... Uh, into like uh, philosophy and the uh, understanding of knowledge and the name of which I have now forgotten. Epistemology. Yeah, and I could never pronounce it. That was always the thing. <laughs> there you go. Epistemology. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't pronounce it. And I met Casey, and he says, "Yeah, I'm going to do a talk at Seattle Atheist, and it's about epistemology, the knowledge of belief." And I'm like, "Wow, that's more than that's a lot of words. And many words you have." Meta, meta knowledge. Meta knowledge. Yeah. yeah. That I would have gotten because yeah, yeah, I'm a computer yeah. programmer. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> Do we I like that word meta. Is yeah. is do we need to have that sort of thing to have this debate? Uh, you look at guys like uh, Godel, um, Gödel, and he's got this the whole language, and he's a guy who, who came up with the uncertainty. It won't get into the deepness uh, depth of that, but it's just it's there's a lot of complexities when you start winding down deeper and deeper and deeper. But that's available to you if you want to go down that deep. Yeah. Case is interested in that, so he can go that deep, and other people might be interested in that too. You don't have to have it though. Right. Right. It's, that, not, it's not a requirement. That's true. That, that's true. But mostly it's just a questioning attitude, skepticism, and that kind of thing, and you'll get there. Uh, do we want to do one more? <laughs> sure, no, we, we can do go? more, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Kevin from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and he writes that the case for Christ destroyed his faith. And he says, I was pretty strong in my belief when one day I decided to watch the case for Christ to reinforce my beliefs. The arguments were so bad that I started questioning my beliefs, and now for over a year later, I'm an atheist. You will, he <laughs> you will hear a lot of apologists say, well, it was just a bad experience. You just need the right experience. Right. I'm still waiting for that to come along. I know. I, 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 and the thing is, I used to listen to To Every Man and Answer all the time. It's a fascinating apologetic show. But 
it, 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 that's one of the things that shook my beliefs too. You you listened to a lot of Harold Camping, didn't you? No, I to Every Man and Answer was the one I used to listen to. And oh, okay, all right. It was an interesting show, but I started to hear them stumble over themselves, and it was it was uh, very eye opening after a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Uh, I, this is this is a pretty strong trope in the atheism movement. Is somebody looks into the history of it, right. looks for the real, real, you know, the real case for Christ and and how the Bible was. I mean, the Bible was assembled by committee. It wasn't really. It didn't come down from on high. Right. It was, uh, it was designed like any programming language. Did they use Robert's rule of order? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But and when people go looking for these these miraculous things that happened in the Bible and in other religious texts, the closer they look, and and the harder they look. They look for historical evidence. They look for proof that these miracles actually occurred. Right, right. The harder it is to believe. Now compare that to say what killed off the dinosaurs. Correct. Yeah. Is you know is one of the what killed off the dinosaurs? We have se- separate evidence from separate lines of reasoning. Exactly. It's not like we have one witness. We can go geology, chemistry, physics, all those things point to the same one independently. But for a long time, it was that we were not certain if it, it seems like a meteor killed the dinosaurs because they just all died suddenly. But that's what's cool. That's what we teach kids at Camp Quest. I don't know. Yeah. That's one of the great things at Camp Quest. Kids can walk away saying. At some point, I don't know. But we and didn't. That's okay. We didn't but know. I don't know. Let's find out. That's right. Okay, but we didn't know. And right. then, and then eventually, uh, evidence started. We started accruing evidence. Like Correct. for one thing, there was a global later. Would that of, evidence have come along if we said we know? No. No. We would have stopped looking. Yeah. But there's right. like there's a layer of iridium in the soil, yes. and iridium is not a, a common element Correct. on Earth. Yeah. And uh, I think we got time for one more email. This is a oh, this is a long one. Uh, this is John from Columbus, Ohio. Why is it that when these phony shows about encountering ghosts air, why doesn't anyone address the issue of these clothed ghosts? As far <laughs> as I know, according to these ghost chasers, spirits are haunting these buildings and they are investigating. However, I wasn't aware that clothing, too, had a spiritual afterlife and can come back along with the dearly <laughs> departed. I would love to. I would love for someone to ask these ghost investig- investigators why is it that a, sil- a Civil War soldier is in full uniform when the apparition appears? That's, that's a great question. <laughs> I know, I may be an atheist, but my shirt is Jewish. <laughs> what? I don't know. I've tried to, it's, I don't know. Apparently my shirt has a soul and it, it you know, will be transferred on to the afterlife. When, oh, you know, so there might be like a possibility that. that you get one afterlife, but your clothing gets another afterlife. Yeah. What if you get somebody that, else's clothing in the afterlife? Oh. Oh, no. I, I come back in a dress? I mean, yeah. That's fine if that's your thing. But, you know. <laughs> I love those ghost shows. I really do. <laughs> it's like all so, of a sudden you just see a flash of light and they're like, oh my god! So that's all the time for. Quickly, uh, congratulations to skeptic contributor Case on his marriage to Amber. Best of luck and uh, have a good marriage. So hooray, this is, hooray. This is Ask an Atheist. My name is Sam Mulvey. My co-hosts were Nick Kennedy and Chuck Wilbur. Music is by Chris Coleman. Call screener was Dev- Darren Garvin. Production assistants, Rebecca Friedman and Mike Gillis. You can give us a call at 206-420-0997. We are at the office in an hour. Uh, we will see you then. Eat, drink, be merry. Indeed. Secular Human Play Radio.